Before we start this little q and I just want to say a prayer entering us into this Q&A and I got some deep questions on my Q&A Instagram thing that I put up. <laughs> so we're just gonna say a prayer really quick before we start, but let's just do it. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for the other person on the side of the screen, God, and anyone who is listening or watching, God, I just hope they know how much you love them, God, and how willing and eager you are to work in their lives, God. Please ease me and Jamie's hearts in this, God, and give them the best answers that we have possible, God. We just want to hear your voice, and we want you to work through us in this time, God. And we know that the devil really tries to bring us down in so many different ways, and the world has a lot of temptations for us, God. And we also know that you understand all of those things, God. And so we just ask that you change our hearts and you change our minds. And we know that we can only find peace and comfort and love in you. And I pray that the person on this other side of the screen, God, knows that and feels you today, God. And your will be done as you want it, God. And we just trust in you so much. And we love you. And we adore your presence, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's start the Q&A. <laughs> hey guys. Hey vlog. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gray. If you're new here, if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you. Today we're filming a fun video. We're doing a little Q&A. This is Jamie. Hey guys. She's my best friend. <laughs> if you guys have watched the vlogs before, you've definitely seen her. If not, this is the formal introduction, but Hi. I have known Jamie since I was two, two. years old. <laughs> and so we've grown up together, shared a lot of insight together, have a lot of the same views on a lot of things. And so we decided to do a Q&A and ask you guys some questions. No, no, I you guys ask us questions. Oh yeah, <laughs> hello. It's late, my brain's not working. Yeah, it's a little late. You guys ask us questions and we try to give the best answers possible so that's what we're gonna do yeah. right now but so. maybe we'll start off with like a little formal introduction why don't you tell the vlog like how old you are just a little bit about <laughs> yourself so i'm jamie i am 20 years old i'm from orange county california this is where we grew up together but i moved to minnesota last year for college and then i did a year of college and now i, I took a, a year off basically or i'm not in college anymore because i run a Christian dance company and I'm doing like an internship at a church so I'm kind of doing like more creative stuff trying to follow my passion so yeah that's kind of what I'm doing but I come back obviously to come home so that's where we are now but thank god for that this but. is my my non-blood sister but yes. it's as close as we're gonna get <laughs> yes and obviously you guys know me but she just said 21 live in Orange County California I went to fit em, graduated with my bachelor's She's and graduated queen. <laughs> yeah. So also we're obviously gonna answer these questions to our best of our ability and it's more so our opinions, you know, and like our personal yeah. experience, but obviously take it with a grain of salt. Like we're not any I'm not a therapist yeah. or anything like that. Some some of the questions that were asked, I'm gonna do my best to answer. <laughs> They're <but> pretty deep. <laughs> yeah, pretty but. deep, but you know, obviously you never know. So but people like answered her little questionnaire on Instagram, so that was one of you. Hopefully we get to your question. Yeah. Unless it's the Topix question. We, <laughs> we won't bet you part this. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's Anyways. get into the video. I don't really know most of the questions. Okay, we're starting off with an easy one. Um, what is your favorite childhood memory together? Ooh. Do tell. I There's just have so, so many. many. I know, I just have so many. I don't many. even know. Honestly, probably playing Barbies <laughs> and walking to school together. We'd always do that with our moms and our dogs. And then, actually, did we do that? Or did we just go on walks all the time because we lived just by each walks. other? Yeah, because we didn't really go to school for that long. Anyways, Barbies, though. We used to fight, like, literal sisters. Yeah, you over guys. Over Barbies and Ken and Unreal. all the things. So, yes. but that was honestly, that was pretty, that was pretty cute. And then, like, trips we would do, like, Mammoth and no, stuff. No, one of my, my favorite childhood memories, I think, so my mom's really healthy and Jamie's mom's really healthy, Please. like in terms of food. So growing up, like we didn't get to have like Cheez-Its or Cheetos or anything like that. We had like it was all the Annie's. <laughs> yeah. And so me and Jamie did gymnastics together. I think like on a Wednesday or maybe it was Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday. every single week. 
every single like week for gymnastics jamie's mom would let her have like chips like the the real kind of chips so she would wait to eat her chips and she would come to gymnastics and we would share the chips together i have like such a vivid, <laughs> well, vivid memory that. in my head of her getting out the car and being like look and holding up the cheetos and being like Please. so excited that's it was like a one of my deal. most vivid memories if we yeah. got like normal stuff yeah like normal Doritos or something like that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people would have birthdays at gymnastics and we had to like ask our mom before we ate the, the sweets. But the thing is like they were twins. Like they did the same yeah. for me and Grace. And so it was always just like us against the world with their little yeah. cucumbers and bell peppers. <laughs> While they were besties. like having fruit loops yeah. and stuff. <laughs> it like, sucks. Please. But yeah, and we used to go on ski trips to Mammoth together when we were young. Like we did so much in the lake and all of that. Yeah. So we did such fun stuff when we were little. There's so many memories. And I think just like growing up together and having such a special bond. Yeah. So those also, are like, our favorite. Okay, so we were like besties, but we weren't in the same grade. So like mm -hmm. she'd have her different friends. But I would always come to the birthday party like knowing like her so well. And I remember there was one birthday party. <laughs> And it was like everyone like in your school and like me and I was always like kind of like an outcast because like I didn't go to the same school as her. And we did a questionnaire on you and like I knew all the questions like what's your oh, first I'm word sure. and I was like milk and everyone was like and I'm I was like, sure. <laughs> I just remember like it was so awkward but we were like inseparable. It was so funny. Do yeah. you remember that? Yeah, oh of course God, I the do. The questionnaire in the backyard. It was course. So yeah, that's my answer. But I can't even remember half of them to be honest with you. I know. That's like I the best really. I could wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. And so sure mom we should get our mom to like talk about what we did as yeah. little chickens. <laughs> and we used to have sleepovers with our two brothers and then me and Jamie yeah. and it would just be like a little party. It was so fun. My parents used to like it was wholesome. literally clear out this entire living room and like put blankets and pillows down and we'd all sit in there the, and watch and movies. movies. Wait, yes. actually I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Popcorn and yes. like and our the candy. Kitchen. Yes. Oh my god, it was the best. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Is this focused on us? I feel so, like it's yeah. blurry. Okay, there we go. I feel like the closer we are, the less it's blurry. But yeah, those are those are some of our favorite childhood memories. We'll start off with the little ushy gushy question at <laughs> first before we get into the other stuff. But yeah. Okay, you guys, in all honesty, like I'm a little nervous to answer these questions just because they're obviously a little bit deeper and some of them are very faith-based, which is sometimes nerve-wracking because the Holy Spirit works differently in everybody and God leads so differently in each person's life. So I, I'm going to be try, I'm going to try to be really careful with like the way that I answer these questions and kind of just speak from personal experience. And obviously it might not work for you because again, like we're all called to different things. We are all the body of Christ, but multiple parts and on God the body. God works differently in every single person. Yeah. So. so just keep that in mind. Like as I'm answering these questions, it's going to be based on my personal experience and her personal experience. So just to know before we get started but the first question is advice when it comes to not being able to hear god speak to you during prayer and devotion and then how to hear his words towards you so do you want to go or do you want me to go you want me to go start first i can yeah. if you want me to no, okay. sure. so this is a big one that obviously like i've even questioned before struggled with and i have a lot of friends in my life that we talk about this subject on um and honestly i'm going to say like the most profound things that have stuck with me uh one thing is that god doesn't shout so oftentimes like there's a bible verse i'm pretty sure somewhere that's like they like satan will shout but god will whisper um and that's really tough because our brains are just so filled with so many thoughts and just going all over the place yeah. but when you take that time to sit in silence and just listen to the whispers that's where the lord is um, so that's one thing that's profound. Also, oftentimes we expect like an audible voice and you know, that's amazing if that's an encounter that you've had with the Lord, but that's not everybody's experience. Yeah. And I do know one thing for sure, like God gave us a Bible full of his word. Like if you have any Bible, like that's God's word in physical form. And sometimes it doesn't need to be audible, but if you're a Christian and you have the Holy Spirit in you, when you're reading, something might click with you and that's a form of the Lord speaking to you yeah, through his absolutely. word. Um, and also just our thoughts come from somewhere. So oftentimes I, I hear the Lord's ver like voice through my own thoughts, knowing that I didn't come up with that on my own. Yeah, and if it's not something that's negative and something that I would say is from Satan, I truly believe that's just the Holy Spirit 
communicating back and forth with me because I'm a Christian so the, my entire being is filled with the Holy Spirit so those thoughts and those ideas and those just like conversations I have within myself I believe is the Holy Spirit and God speaking to me so that's kind of some of the things that I think. <laughs> Absolutely, I totally agree. I'm like gonna add to that and kind of say my own thing, but the the thing that that God has blessed me with the most, like I do hear his voice and feel his hands, that's such a blessing and a gift. And it happens most when I sit in silence with him. So when nothing else is distracting me, when I'm completely focused on me and like my quiet time with God, that's when he speaks to me the most. And again, it's totally different for every person, but it's so important and special for you to spend time just alone in your relationship with God. And so maybe trying that as well, and then it will lead you from there. But also something that I've really realized recently is that the miracles that God performs are amazing and profound and all of that. The ways that he speaks to us and shows us gifts and all of those things. Again, amazing, beautiful, all of those things. But our Christianity and our relationship with God is not based on those things. It's based on our faith and the Bible and the words that God has placed in front of us. So and while, what he's already done. Like, yes, his, yes. Yeah. And while I love... God, God's voice, like I desire that so much. If God never spoke to me again, Jesus and what he did for me on the cross and what the Bible contains would be enough for me for my faith to carry me through. And so obviously this is a scary thought, but if God never speaks to you in the way that you desire, you have to realize maybe that Jesus is still enough and God is still working and God is still living and moving and carrying out his will and perfect plan even if you're not hearing what you desire because god doesn't always give us what we desire yeah. so i think that's important as well but again i think when you surround yourself in community when you go to church when you're involved in worship night and bible study if that's where you feel connected maybe god will move through you in that sitting in silence and in your relationship with god maybe he'll move through you in that like i think trying different things and seeing where you feel and hear god's voice the most will also help you but another thing to know feelings are fleeting and our feelings are not a relationship either yeah. god's word is so basing everything on that is the most important i'm just gonna add one more thing because this is big for me it's really hard to sit in silence with the lord and it's funny because i was reading a devotion and it literally said like laugh with god over the fact that Satan is so good at distracting you when you're sitting yeah. in silence with the Lord. Like, if any of you try to just, like, talk with God, your brain just goes everywhere. Yeah. Like, we struggle with the same thing. But one yeah, thing absolutely. that really sticks with me and that I try to overcome with discipline is the reason that it's so hard to sit in silence is because the enemy's good and he will take mm -hmm. what's most powerful and try to destroy that. Yeah. And sitting in silence with God and hearing from him is so powerful. So, of course... Of course the enemy is going to try to distract you in any way, but if at some point you can just laugh with God over it and just overcome it and count on his strength, that's a game changer. So be yes. kind to yourself because it's obviously really hard because of the enemy, but discipline and prayer for wisdom and strength is also great. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully that um, <laughs> did a good yeah, job. Yeah, hopefully but... that helps. Obviously okay. we don't, yeah, that's our plan. Yes, <laughs> again, but okay, the next one. Advice for walking away from someone you know doesn't treat you right. Okay. <sighs> Oi, this is obviously boy. such a tough one, but I feel like I have a lot of empathy towards this question and I totally understand it. I think sometimes we allow friendships relationships, family members, like literally whatever it is, we allow people to treat us poorly because of the love that we have for them. However, what I've realized and like really worked on in myself the past few months is realizing that because you love them, it's not a justification for them to treat you poorly. And setting boundaries and sticking to those boundaries is important. And also the way that you respect and feel about yourself is teaching others how to treat you. So if you're setting boundaries in a relationship with a boyfriend and he's not 
following the boundaries that you're setting or respecting the boundaries but then in turn you don't leave or respect yourself enough to walk away he will in turn not respect you so how you feel about yourself holds the biggest candle to all of it and you can love somebody and still walk away from them and still care about them and pray about them and like want the best for them but just not accept the way that they treat you and i think that comes with like self-worth and confidence and like knowing your identity is not in that person but in christ like, that was a huge thing for me and just like your friends and your family and people that love you are there to support you and lift you up and help you walk away and help you get what you deserve however like it again it totally is reliant on yourself and your self-worth and your self-respect how you carry yourself and every single per person is worthy of healthy love and for somebody to treat them correctly and obviously you don't want to have anybody in your life that's comfortable with dis disrespecting you in any capacity or doesn't treat you right so it's just not worth it at the end of the day that's what i think i feel like everything she said I i'm gonna add two things yeah, one is just do. the like the idea of like when you have a cup and you have another cup and you're constantly pouring into whether that's a friendship or a relationship or a family member you're constantly pouring in all your love all your energy um, and giving it your all in a healthy way and you aren't getting filled up at yeah. some point you are going to be drained and empty um, and so if you are not having a like give double, and take. a give and take yeah. relationship or if it's not two-sided then obviously that's just gonna run you run you dry yeah. Um, and yeah it goes back to just your self-worth knowing that first off the Lord's love for you and God's like adornment of you is enough so you have what God thinks of you and your worth in God and then you have such a firm foundation that you expect nothing less and if you have people in your life that bring you da down and don't challenge you and tear your self-worth down then obviously that's not what we're called to find no absolutely so if you have the lord's like rock and foundation in your life then you're strong enough and you don't need all these other people to fill you up so then it'll only leave room for the good people and people that will push you and guide you yeah and obviously god gives strength and peace and comfort in certain situations and so i think when it comes to a realization of like okay this person is not helping me serve serve the lord this person is not like helping me feel good about myself this person is not making me a better human being it's honestly pulling me away from all of oh, those yeah. things and from god i think with that god gives so much strength to walk away and I think just praying about it and realizing that yeah, God loves you so much and would never want you to be in that type of situation. And honestly, there are seasons. Like, maybe the Lord has somebody in your life for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. Yeah, and that's a tough pill to swallow sometimes with friendships or relationships. But that can very much be the case. Like, you can have a relationship that maybe wasn't meant to stay but it was there for a season and you learned a lot and yeah. it's time to move on so you'll know when it's a lifetime situation hopefully that's with yes. god at the center but yes. like that is a reality lifetime season or reason so yes so true okay the next one is exciting <laughs> it says was there a turning point that made you want to grow a stronger relationship with god and I just told Jamie this today. Like, I'm going to film a video of my testimony because I constantly... She's going to do it. Yes. I constantly get DMs about it, and I've been praying about it a lot, and I, I've, God is, like, nudging on my heart to do it, but obviously it's nerve-wracking to talk about those things. So I will do a full separate video, but I'm just going to answer this a little bit, like, right now, and we're going to, like, go from there, and then Jamie can answer also. But I will do a video, like I promise you. So be on the lookout for that. But my answer is, I grew up in a Catholic household and I went to Christian school my whole life. However, making a decision for pursuing a relationship with God by yourself and for yourself is very different than being placed in school or growing up with it 
for your family like obviously when you get older you have to make the decision on your own and i've been really open on my channel before about my struggle with anxiety and depression and like my mental health and where i was at in that place and god really took me to rock bottom like i hit the ocean floor <laughs> like i really did and it made me realize that i can't do anything in my life without the lord's hands I needed him so badly and he has completely undone me, transformed me and made me new, built me back up again. And I think it was just a realization of hitting rock bottom that I can't do this without God. And then everything followed after that. But there's a really, this is the exact moment, like I could tell you exactly where I was, but my friend Taylor, shout out Taylor, got me a book. It's called Moving Beyond Anxiety. and. I had been reading the book, like sitting out tanning by my pool. <laughs> I had been reading the book and it was talking about how anxiety and mental health struggles are from the devil and not from God and how it's so detrimental to your relationship as a, like with God as a Christian to constantly not trust God with your anxiety and your mental health struggles, like not take that to God and try to handle it on your own. Like that's so detrimental to you and how the devil attacks our mind in so many different ways. And I remember reading like this whole thing about it and just breaking down and realizing the Holy Spirit just kind of moved in and realizing I literally cannot heal myself. I will not be okay without the Lord. Everything that I am, everything that I have, who I am as a human being, my past and the rest of my life, I want everything in God's hands. I want him in control. And I said, I got on my hands and knees, sobbing my eyes out by my pool in the middle of a summer day and <laughs> said to God, like, not my will, God, but yours be done. Take my entire life, take my whole heart, take everything that I am, God, and do your magic. And honestly, since that day, Jamie's known me for 20, 19 years, 20 years of my life. God has just worked over time on me really and transform me so much it's such a blessing i'm so so grateful and it's so, so cool to see yes and the, so like, complete change it's amazing it's beautiful and great and jamie has been on her journey a, a lot like a lot longer than me and she has always like extended invitations to church and we've talked about it and we've done bible study but when you are living for the ways of the world People can plant seeds and we are called to do that as Christians, but only God can change your heart. And so it was just a matter of time before God <laughs> changed mine. So I'm so grateful, but that was the moment for me. And ever since that day, she's a no woman. more anxiety, no more depression. And I'm a completely changed woman in Christ. <laughs> I, do that. I love that so much. So that's like my feeling and my turning point, but Jamie's going to share now. <laughs> So I was kind of similar story as kids. I was raised actually Orthodox, Greek Orthodox. Um, so I was just ra raised in the church, but had a very like religious understanding of the church. And I mean that as like, it's a Sunday thing, you do the same rituals. Yeah. It's not Jesus as your best friend. Uh, it's just yes. a little bit more like religious acts versus relationship. And so I went to Minnesota, freshman year of college. Um, and obviously I didn't really know anybody there like I was going to a whole new state I was like trying to do the rush thing like it was just a lot. I remember one time Sitting in but obviously it's a lot deeper like I had people come in my life and my boyfriend was a big Absolute part of it But yes. this one specific time I was sitting in my dorm bed just like What am I doing? <laughs> like I really want to meet people whatever yes. and I had a revelation with the Lord and He was told like told me that he was meant to be my best friend and I had to pursue a friendship with God and that he was my best friend and I didn't need to find other people because he was that and so that was like the changing point for me and then it was a Friday night and it was either blackout Friday for my sorority or a church group called salt like a worship night and um, I had been invited by like a really crazy connection through like my boyfriend's mom and then this girl and I ended up choosing to go to the work like the worship night over blackout Friday mm -hmm. and that's where I met like all my community of friends and then the Holy Spirit just completely took over my life and I was truly on fire for the Lord starting then so it happened like a year and a half ago and so I've been on this best friend 
relationship journey with the Lord since. So for me, it was the difference between religion and relationship. Honestly, yes. I don't say I'm religious because I don't do religious acts. It's all about having a friendship with Jesus and talking to him like a friend. So true. Um, which is not taught <laughs> normally yes. when you grow up with like Catholicism or Orthodox or stuff like that. Yes. So yeah, that's kind of a very small, small snippet of my testimony. <laughs> yeah, and not to say that you can't pursue the Lord and like be in a sorority, of course, no, 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 yeah. but I think that with God calling you comes obedience and God definitely called her to something different in her life and so that's when you choose to obey of course but not to say at all because everyone's story and testimony is different and God calls us all to different things so maybe you're called to be a light in your sorority who knows yes, so <laughs> you just never know but really special stories from both of us and thank you Jesus for that yes <laughs> we're blessed what a friend we have in Jesus right literally okay anyways moving on <laughs> we keep like having to prop like, it up anyways how do you introduce the gospel to friends who may not be familiar without being too much? Okay. Just a tough one. Take a deep breath before this. So I really struggle with this also. And my mom and Jamie's mom and Jamie and me went to dinner last night and we had this huge conversation about it. And again, I think this comes with God calling us all to different things. So let's just start with that. Mm -hmm. However, I obviously struggle with this and this is a big thing in the Christian faith because we don't want to be forceful or judgmental of other people's beliefs or religions or who they are and everyone comes to Jesus on their own terms like what I just talked about like Jamie had been doing it maybe almost a year before me and like was doing her diligence to bring me to the Lord but again it's a Holy Spirit thing and it's a God thing and only God can change your heart. So it's it's a fine line to walk with being forceful, but also just being in desperation of the people that you love coming to Jesus just as you have. I totally understand that. And so for me personally, I try to, on one side, let who I am and my actions and my truth and the way that I live my life be the biggest testament to my friends or family or loved ones that don't believe in Christ reverse. in the same way that I do or at all. I try to live my life in the way that they would see that and desire that as well because people who have known me for, for a long time see such an immense change in the past like nine months of my life and who I was before Jesus and who I am now. So I think your heart is the biggest testament and the biggest way you can show people. But I do think that God calls us to minister to certain people in our lives sometimes. And we are called to be disciples and to bring others to Christ. So I think just praying for them and praying that God will change their heart, number one. And number two, just slowly planting seeds in them, telling them, hey, Jesus loves you. Like, I hope you know Jesus loves you extending the invitation hey i go to church every sunday like would you like to come with me and they can always say no be be prepared for a lot of no's that's definitely going to happen but just slowly starting to integrate that in their lives and show them the love of jesus and slowly start to teach it to them without being forceful and also it comes with dropping your judgments on the way that they live their life or the things that they believe because we never want to be judgmental to anybody that's not what God calls us to mm -hmm. and so again if you feel called to minister or if God's speaking to you to disciple I think just slowly inviting letting them know the love of Jesus slowly bringing that into their lives that would be like my biggest opinion about it so yeah but I totally get it's valid that it's a struggle mm -hmm. and I get super overwhelmed and anxious about it because the eternal life thing you know it's a big one so of course like i want every single person that i love to know jesus just as i do so it's valid to not know yeah. how to handle it all the time and i don't have a perfect answer let's see if jamie has one though no nothing she's gonna read from, from the bible yeah so, so i'm gonna say a couple things so anyways okay ready okay yeah it's very valid because I mean, I felt this way too, like I was telling her this last night. I just had a day that I was in an art class at school and I literally had to go to the bathroom because I just started freaking out that literally nothing else is worth it 
or yeah. like worth this entire world and like coming to know Jesus. And I was like, what am I wasting my time doing besides spreading the gospel? But then we live in a world that tells you that like you can't push your religious views on people and you got to be respectful, which is valid. And it's so tough because you want people to do what they were created to do, which is find their creator, but you don't want to be forceful. Yeah. And it's so tough because you see everybody in this world running to so many different things, yeah. like to find a reason for why they're here and who created them the and filament. how I'm breathing without doing anything. Like people want to know, but obviously there's a lot of other distractions that people run to. So it's so tough because we want to shout it from the rooftops, but you also want to be loving. Yes. But anyways, one of the verses that the is good moment. is uh, Matthew 5, 14, and it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one, no one's light, wait, what? No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out to all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. So that kind of goes back to the idea of like your actions and just being a light to people, whether they understand why you are that way or not. They will wonder, like, there's something different in you. Yes. And you just have to trust that the Lord will use that as a seed to grow an oak tree. Um, but yeah, the Lord calls us to love, never to judge. And if we can just love others, that will be a testament to our Father. And hopefully we can be transparent yes. to God. So that's one way. Two ways. Somebody asked me what my word was for 2023. And I didn't have one except like right now. And I, it's going to be unashamed. Oh, it's coming up <laughs> yeah. right now. It's going to be unashamed because... It's, that's when my my favorite Bible verse is Romans one sixteen, which is for I'm not unashamed for I am unashamed of the gospel, mm. and yeah, being unashamed and realizing like if the Lord's proud of you, if the Lord's for you, then all other judgments go out the window. Yes, and if you truly like know and want to share this gospel, like don't be ashamed of it because it's powerful, and it's somebody's eternity. That yes. depends on this gospel, yes. and that's a tough pill to swallow, but we believe that with our entire heart, and it's hard to explain why we believe that so much, but if you know Jesus, you understand. Anyways, so don't be ashamed. Like, if you have an opportunity to speak with somebody at a coffee shop, that might be the only time you ever get to speak with them, and if you can just tell them, like, Jesus loves you, that could be a seed that brings them to heaven. Like, you never know. So... Don't be ashamed. Obviously do it in a loving way. Don't slam people on the head with the Bible because that's never a way to do it. Yes. But love them and if you can drop a God bless you in your good deeds or a Jesus loves you by like opening Writing the door or something, or something. Like yeah. everything matters. Don't yeah. be ashamed because this is the most powerful aspect of life and people are struggling and they need it. Yes. So yeah, Amen. don't be ashamed. Jumping, piggybacking off of what she said. They talk about this all the time, and I think a really big transformative moment in my heart to start working towards evangelism was watching this video about this guy speaking on Christianity, and he was an atheist for years and years and years, and he had come to Christianity, and they were interviewing him and asking him, why were you an atheist for so long, and what made you come to Christianity? And he said, one of the biggest reasons that I'm an atheist, or I was an atheist, was because Christians say that their God is so amazing that they love him more than anything in the world That he is unlike no other that he's transformative and changing and forgiving and all these characteristics that we Connect with God on and he said I never heard about Jesus ever not one stranger Not one Christian came up to me and said hey Jesus loves you like let me tell you about the Bible Hey Jesus loves you like let me tell you how much he does hey Jesus loves you like let me change Let me tell you the way that you can change your heart. He said not once and if you're on fire for something wouldn't you want to scream it from the rooftops and tell everybody and ever since that moment I was convicted so hard in that moment and I was like wow that is so true I totally want to be a light for others and a reason that others are in heaven and what she just said like our eternity like rests on our faith in Christianity in Jesus Christ and a, like with that and along with that comes so much love and grace and mercy forgiveness and fruitfulness so of course you want the people you love and in your life to feel those things as well so i totally agree being unashamed of the bible with a loving standpoint and not judging and not forcing so yep that's our answer because <laughs> i just feel called to say something because many of you may be watching this right now and you don't know jesus 
um, and you're just like, what is all of this like talk? Because I'm sure it's overwhelming. I like, I totally feel yeah. you. Um, one thing that I want you to think about real quick, and it's deep, but this is like the biggest testament to just the fact that like a God exists, is the fact that you're watching this video right now and you are breathing. Your lungs are breathing for you. Your heart is pumping. Your veins are flowing. You're listening. You're seeing colors. That is very hard to comprehend how that works. And how the heck are we breathing on our own and speaking and talking and seeing? I mean, it points to nothing more than a supernatural power. And if you look around this earth and you see oceans and ocean animals and just the miraculous like birth of children and all of that stuff, I mean, it points to nothing else. And I challenge you to ask yourself why you're here and who created you and God created us to be in relationship with him so there is always going to be that craving on your heart to understand what we're doing here on earth and we're here to inspire you to find that relationship with the Lord and all you have to do is open your heart and accept him as your savior and if you want to do that right now I would love to say a prayer together if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you can do this right now and just, just, yeah, repeat after us and we just pray that the Lord will intercede. So just follow along if you'd love to accept Jesus in your heart. This is all you have to do. It has nothing to do with you. All you have to do is accept him and he'll move for the rest of your life. Lord, I don't understand it all. It's a lot for our brains to comprehend, but I do know that I have a tugging on my heart right now and... I can't explain it and I don't really know exactly what it all means but Jesus I want to learn more about you and I want to live a life fulfilled without anxieties without depression and I know that you don't promise a perfect life but you do promise a life of eternity with you one day without any more pain without any more suffering and I just pray that you come into my heart right now and give me wisdom and give me a full new understanding of why I'm here on this earth and I don't know all the answers to all my questions, but I do feel a tugging on my heart that is pointing me to you. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior with a heart ready to learn and a heart ready to love others and be a light in this world. And Father, I want to join your kingdom and I pray that you will give me wisdom and work in my life um, forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I also want to say something really quick that I want you guys to know as well is that Jesus takes you just as you are and whether or not you know it whether or not believe you believe Jesus loves you so immensely and so deeply I had such a sense of feeling the need to clean myself up before I came to Jesus or grow before I came to Jesus or work on myself be this new person before I came to Jesus and the realization that Jesus doesn't care how messy you are. He doesn't care what you struggle with. There's nothing on this earth that Jesus' love can't overcome for you. And you don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to be made new by the world. Jesus will take you through everything in your life. And he will transform you. He will undo you. He will love you through it all. And I just want you to know, even if you don't feel it or you don't know, Jesus loves you so, so immensely. I love you and I would love to answer any other questions you guys have. My Instagram is always linked down below. I'm going to link Jamie's channel and her Instagram as well. So if you have any other questions you like want to answer, shoot us a DM and we would love to do our best. But thank you guys for watching. And yeah, thanks for having an open mind to listen to our answers. Yes. Hopefully they helped in some yes. way. And we love you. We love you. And Jesus, we pray. Amen. Jesus loves you Bye. so much. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>